Let us find our seats. Ooh, I've got a voice. <laughs> Thank you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth, his truth endures forever. Good morning, Pebble Creek Church family. honored visitors, and our friends joining us on the web. We welcome you to our time of worship, and we look forward to praising the Lord together as joyful believers in Christ Jesus. A celebration of life service will be held for our dear sister, Judy Merwall, here on Sunday, April 28th at 11 a.m., Please see the bulletin on where to address your cards and notes to the family, and let us keep Hal and his family in our prayers. If you need prayer, we are here for you. We have a devoted prayer partners who will lift up your request to the Lord. Please see the bulletin for information to contact Edna DeFord with your prayer request. You are also invited to join our circle of prayer at 8.45 a.m. just prior to our worship service. We meet next in the corner, either that corner or that corner, but you'll see us, we're in a circle. We do this to lift up prayers for everyone involved in making our worship service so special. We also pray for our congregation, community, and the world. Giving back to, a Lord, to the Lord a portion of what he has given us is a privilege and an honor for believers. You may do so by depositing your gifts in the offering boxes. They are located near each exit. Or visit the website for more giving options. Many of you have asked, how can I get my own personal name badge? Well, it's easy. There is a form in the back on the information table, take it, complete it, send it with your check, and a form and a badge will be delivered to you. It's really good that you get one because we're not always, our memories are not always as good as they used to be. <laughs> so it's really helpful to have a badge to help us along. We would love to have you remain following the service for our time of worship, or fellowship. Enjoy good conversation, meet a new friend over coffee, and a delicious treat or two. I'd like to introduce Merrick McFarlane with our education department at, to make a presentation. Following the, her presentation, our choir will win, render a beloved anthem, Amazing Grace, my chains are gone. I'm sure you're very familiar with that. So thank you for your kind attention. And now let us invite the Holy Spirit into this service and into our hearts. Blessings and peace to you all. Thank you, Susan. I'm Mary McFarland, Chair of the Education Committee. And I'd like to invite the members of the Education Committee and the Bible Study Facilitators to come forward um, as I ask the rest of you a question. How many of you out there are aging? <laughs> and we can be thankful for that, right? And what's one piece of advice recommended for aging? You can come up here. For aging brains? Learning something new. Well, our committee and our leaders can help you with that. 
A paraphrase of Proverbs 18:15 tells us wise men and women are always learning, always listening for fresh insights. And I think anybody who's been in a Bible study will agree we keep on learning and see new understanding in the Bible as we continue growing our faith. Another way to help our aging brains is to have an active social life. Well, we can help with that too. When you spend an hour or two each week with others in a group, you get to know them better and become more comfortable in sharing your joys, your concerns, and praying with each other. And 1 Thessalonians 5.11 directs us, we encourage one another and build each other up. And the Education Committee, composed of Joel Arnold, Howard Atkinson, Steve Duncanson, Ruth Wendorski, and Rebecca Weibel, and me, want to thank each of our facilitators for your time, extra study, and opening your homes so others can learn and encourage each other. The elder liaison to the committee, Leota Easley, will help hand out a token of our appreciation. Uh, we have nine groups now. We have Nancy Duncanson. <laughs> uh, she, her group meets on Thursday morning. Last fall, they sell, studied Psalm 23 in the spring. They did a study uh, titled Seek First His Kingdom, which was a study in Matthew. And next fall, there will likely uh, be a study on uh, prayer by a variety of authors. And Judy Jelsima met on Thursday afternoons and studied Randy Elkhorn's book on heaven. Judy will soon be moving back to Michigan, but we'll miss you next year, Judy. And Rebecca Weibel meets on Monday afternoons and has been using the uh, YouTube series, The Bible from 3,000 Feet by Skip Heitzig. They begin with the study of Genesis it last November, and so far they've gone book by book through Proverbs. They'll take a break during the summer, but continue in October with the uh, study of Eccles Ecclesiastes. They'll keep going with the book every week until they complete Revelation. And this is a great study for anybody who's new to Bible study or want to get, get an overview of the Bible. And as Judy, uh, Rebecca says, you can jump in at any time. It's always open. And I hold a uh, Bible study on Wednesday afternoons, and we've spent the whole year going through Revelation, and we're still deciding what we want to do next year. For men's group leaders, uh, Jay, Jay Acock couldn't be here today, but his group meets um, uh, at 7.30 a.m. Tuesday morning on person and on Zoom. And this year they've studied the books of Joshua, Judges, Matthew, Ruth, and Mark, and they um, will continue their study at various books of the Bible and some special sub um, subjects during the summer. Steve Duncanson meets on Wednesday mornings at 7.30 in person and in Zoom. They've studied 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, Ephesians, Philippians, Philemon, before studying the minor prophets of the Old Testament, and they will meet um, on Zoom during the summer months and finish the minor prophets. And I might also add that Steve is our head librarian, so after the service, head back to our library and check out a book. Um, uh, groups for both men and women, Steve Kirk, uh, meets uh, by Zoom on Thursday afternoons. This year they've discussed the life of Jesus, fruit of the Spirit, and started in the footsteps of the Savior, which will continue in the fall. And Howard Atkinson has started a new fat, uh, format this spring. On Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock, he facilitates a group in room 101 that discusses the previous week's session. It's an interesting group, and I think you'll find it's worthwhile getting up early and coming to that. And since we don't have a ser sermon per se this morning, uh, next Sunday he'll be doing uh, the sermon that was delivered on April 7th. And Pastor Nate, we're also grateful for him that he's also joined in leading Bible studies. And he has covered um, James and the Mi uh, Minor Prophets here. I hope this gives you an idea of what we do in our groups. And we have hope you enjoyed other activities sponsored by the Education 
uh, committee. And I'd like to thank Hal Merwald, too, for eight years ago, he revived this education committee, and we've been going strong ever since then, so thank you for that. Um, on Thursday afternoons of the first Thursday of the month, we show a Christian-themed movie in the Ropes and Reserve Theater. And coming up on May 2nd, we'll be showing Steve McQueen, American icon. And I didn't know about his faith, but Pastor Laurie travels the country in search of the true untold story of this actor's faith. And the committee members also do write-ups of Know Your Bible inserts that are in your bulletin on the first Sunday of the month. And we encourage you to read that book of the Bible uh, during the month. So far, we've completed 35 of the 66 books of the Bible. We also make available day, our daily bread devotion and other booklets. So please take one and share one with a friend also. And this group up here will gather near the library after the service so you can meet, ask questions about our studies, and make plans for joining next fall. As our congregation is growing, we will also need more people to facilitate our small groups. If you feel a nudge to be that person, please talk to any of our committee members. No, no formal training is needing, just a love for Jesus and others, and a willingness to serve our Lord and Savior. We thank our leaders and pray for God's continued guidance in all they do. Thank you.
Well, good morning. We're so glad that you're here, and we want to give you a moment to stand and greet one another. Find a new friend and tell them your favorite pie. Well, that was great greeting. I'm going to let you sit back down if you'd like. We're going to sing some really old choruses. They're probably so old that our young little pastor probably doesn't even know them. So <laughs> hopefully he'll, he'll be able to hear all of these and hear you singing. But we picked some songs that we thought would be wonderful to bring in the missionaries that we have here and to remember our heritage and all that we have come through. So join us in singing. You'll see the slides up on the screen. And we'll just go from one chorus to the next. So it's going to be a good morning of choruses. Choir, I'm going to have you sing. Thank you. 
church would have a hymn night and there wasn't any preaching. I always wondered if the pastor just didn't have something prepared or what. But the first one to yell out a page number, that was the song we sang. And uh, Dan, what was your song? I can't remember the song that you always picked. Uh, uh, 333 in the hymnal. Was, uh, <laughs> Grace of Jesus. 333 had the number Wonderful Grace of Jesus because it has this big bo bass part. He wanted to sing the bass part. <laughs> well, mine was 350. In my heart, there rings a melody. And since I'm directing, we're going to sing my song today. <laughs> we'll sing yours next time, Dana. <laughs> but when we, when in my little town where I grew up, we would have what they called these hymn sings, and they would last all day, and you'd bring a picnic lunch, and there'd be quartet after quartet after quartet, maybe a trio, quartet, quart and it would be all day long. I thought it was the most wonderful thing. I thought it was the best entertainment ever, and all my friends were there, and we would kind of run around and go crazy during the whole time, but my mother and father loved it, and so that's, that's the heritage I come from, so I'm sharing that with you today. So let's sing In My Heart There Rings a Melody. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. Oh, 
to repeat the Lord's Prayer together this morning. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. But anyway, I'm here representing the Mission Committee. I'm chairman of the Mission Committee. I'm Edna D. Ford. And the Mission Committee is a very active community in our church, and we like to bring to you the people that we're helping and let you know exactly what they do so that you can have a hand in it when you want to help out too. So today it's my pleasure to bring for you Leanne uh, Leonard. She's with Aqua Free of Food and Clothing Bank here in Avondale. And we go back many years, and even before Leanne, our church was there doing a lot of different things, supplying uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas baskets. Back in the days when we would have big barrels of potatoes and have to put them out in two pound, three pound, and five pound bags, or rice and little plastic bags. There was a lot of changes that's been going on in since the years that I first started at Aquafria almost 20 years ago. So Leanne, let's hear what today Aquafree is like. Come join. Thank you. Um, so it's, it's interesting, your <clears throat> choir was phenomenal and your director made a comment about uh, the hymns being, you know, older and I knew every single one. So apparently I'm old now, so <laughs> there's that. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it really touched me this morning, and so I'm just always so blessed and honored when I have the opportunity to come and to participate uh, in sharing with you all what we've been doing down at the Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank. As Edna said, we do go way back. It's actually been almost nine years that I became the executive director at the Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank. Sometimes that seems short. Sometimes it seems way longer than that. It just depends on the day, um, <clears throat> but we have had a lot of incredible changes. God has been so faithful and has blessed us in incredible ways. And I just want to share a little bit of that with you today. Uh, I'm going to try to stick with my slides, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, they're kind of hard to see, but um, we'll go ahead and go on to the next one so I can tell you a little bit more. Um, so we, we've been in existence for almost 30 years serving the Southwest Valley. Um, for those of you who don't know, we were originally founded in the Presbyterian denomination, and that has since extended expanded into, you know, many different denominations and businesses and individuals who have supported us, but we are actually still in the original building that we've been in for about 27 years, and if you haven't been down, I'd love to give you a tour. Uh, if you want to make the trek down into the Old Town Avondale area, it's not too far, but it's, it's south of the 10, so if you don't go south of the 10, you might need your GPS. Um, <laughs> 
Um, but uh, we're very blessed to have that building. Uh, one of our major issues is that we have outgrown that space. Um, as the years have passed, uh, when we originally started, really we were uh, work to farm workers in that area. So for those of you who are not native, like I am, I'm probably like the unicorn in the room, uh, because I am native. And so back then, the West Valley was much more farmland than it is now. It has grown exponentially. And so um, that work that we were doing to the farm worker population has expanded and uh, our building has not. So that's an issue. Uh, go ahead to the next one. Uh, so there's just a quick picture of our building. We're kind of in between Dysart and Litchfield and like I said, south of the 10, we're actually south of the MC85. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till noon and then we have um, opportunities sometimes in the afternoons and on Saturdays. Um, so we do serve a specific geographic region. So um, we cover Avondale, Goodyear, Buckeye, Tolleson, Cashin, and Litchfield Park. Um, and the reason for that is because it is the West Valley is very expansive and there are not a lot of options for places for people to come and to get assistance. So if you are looking for another bricks and mortar food bank, um, you would have to go from our building another 30 plus minutes to Buckeye. You would have to go another 25 minutes back east to 55th Avenue and Bethany home to get to Hope for Hunger, or you'd have to go 30 minutes all the way north to Surprise. So that is the reason that we cover such a wide range of cities. Um, and so uh, we try to meet the needs of as many people as possible with the space and the food that we get donated to us. Um, so we really focus on meeting basic essential needs. One thing that I think is important as a leader is that we know what we do and we do it really well. Uh, sometimes nonprofits get into uh, a habit, a bad habit, of trying to be everything to all people and then we just can't do it well. We want to excel at what we do and that's meeting basic fundamental needs. So we're going to provide for your food needs, your clothing needs, hygiene, and give you a place to get clean. Clean clothes and fed. That's kind of the, uh, the mission of the, of the food bank. And we want to do that in a way that provides hope, provides dignity to our West Valley neighbors. So that's really important to us is that dignity piece. Um, I am the only full-time paid employee of the Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank. We have a part-time operations manager, which we're currently looking for, but we also have a team of volunteer board members. So we have right now six incredible board members who give generously of their time. We are looking for more. Our ideal number of board members would be around nine to ten. Um, I, I know there are a few people who um, have been members of this church who have served on our board in the past, and so we're always looking for uh, people who have a heart for the mission of what we do and want to join our team and be on our board with us. Um, they're good people, even if Frederick looks a little shady, you know, but he's not, I promise. He's a good guy. Um, I can't see this one. Hold on. Oh yeah, I pretty much covered all that already. But we are in need of volunteers. So one thing that has changed for us, um, as you can imagine, is um, when I'm the only full-time paid employee, we have a part-time operations manager, uh, we are mostly dependent upon volunteers. And so overnight when the pandemic hit, we went from about 50 volunteers on a weekly basis to like none. <laughs> we lost about 95% of our volunteer workforce. So you can imagine if you ran or worked in a business, if you said, oh, I lost 95% of my workforce overnight, how would you sustain your business? Well, through God and his infinite faithfulness, we have been able to not only survive that time during COVID, but thrive and move forward. Uh, we've made our processes and procedures much more efficient in order to be able to do them with less people. We have seen that number in the last year to year and a half of volunteers start to increase a little, but we still are not back up to where we were pre-COVID. So um, that has been a, a societal shift that we've seen, and it's not just food banks, it's all nonprofits. Um, and even many of my church partners has, has, have expressed that they've seen a similar trend. And so we're just trying to kind of navigate and figure out what that is that has shifted and changed in our society and, and what people are looking for for volunteer opportunities 
you. So if you um, are interested in volunteering, I'd love to talk to you more about that. Uh, one of the programs that I'll talk about in a minute is our clothing bank. That was the one thing that kind of got sacrificed in that process of COVID. We did have to close our clothing bank. It was closed for about three years. Last year, I was able to get enough volunteers to be able to reopen that for two days out of the week, but it's still only open for those two days because after a year plus of trying, we still haven't been able to get enough volunteers to open it on those extra days. So if that's something that you think you might be able to say, hey, I'll come every Tuesday and volunteer in the clothing bank, I'd love to talk to you more about those volunteer opportunities. So some of the programs that we offer, the, the main one that everybody thinks about when they think about the food bank is the TFAP program, which is an acronym. Every industry has their own unique set of letters, right? And TFAP is one of ours. It's the emergency food assistance program, and we provide free emergency food boxes to anyone in need, and we offer those every day that we're open. Clients can come in and get a food box. It's about a three-day emergency supply of food for the whole family. But we have a lot of clients who don't have a way to store or prepare the amount of perishable food product that comes in those food boxes. So we offer them an alternative. They can just show us, uh, they don't even have to show us anything. They just give us their name and their date of birth and we can give them a daily lunch sack, which is gonna be enough food to kind of sustain them through the day. And they can come in and get one of those every single day that we're open Monday through Friday. So they can get five bags a week. In addition to those two food options, we also have another USDA Commodities Program, another acronym, CSFP, the Commodity Senior Food Program. Um, that is for seniors who are age 60 years of age and older, which is actually our largest population, um, increasing population of unsheltered clients is actually the senior adult population. So right now we have 61 seniors who are getting assistance through the Senior Food Box Program, and that one allows them them to get a second box in a month. So they can come and get their regular emergency food box. They can also come and get their senior food box as well. And then we also have our mobile pantries, which are held on the first and third Saturday of every month um, at a school parking lot at Barbara Roby Elementary School. And there's no restrictions or limitations to that program. Literally, people pull up in their vehicles. They line up, some of them, at like three in the morning. I have to get there, or whatever volunteer leader um, is meeting the truck has to be there at 4 a.m., which may not seem super early for some of you, but that is way too early for me. Uh, but I do it because we serve an average of about 120 to 150 families at that drive through mobile pantry distribution. So that means our families, who many of whom are working and have multiple incomes in the household, have the option to get an emergency food box once a week and then two options for food boxes on the first and third Saturday of each month so they can have three and then our seniors who are many on fixed incomes or no income have the option for a potential fourth box with that senior food box. So lots of ways to get access to food and healthy nutrition. Um, we also have a shower on site. So for our unsheltered clients, they can come in and take a shower. We provide them 15 minutes. They get a towel and a washcloth to borrow and a hygiene kit with shampoo, conditioner, lotion, and soap that they get to keep and take with them. And then for our little ones, we have our baby care program. This program has seen a huge explosion in the last like year and a half. We have 25 spots available in this program and for the last nine months, almost a year, we've had a wait list of about 10 babies waiting to get into that program. It's the most expensive program that we run because if you've had maybe not had to buy formula or diapers lately, uh, the certain cans of formula right now are running almost $50 a can. Um, yes. <laughs> I agree with that sentiment. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Um, so it's very expensive. And so we are keeping that program currently at 25 spots just because it costs a minimum, like an average usually, of $50 per bag. So we would need just more funding to be able to continue to increase the number of people that we're serving in that program. But it is a very popular program. Some people might be thinking, well, why do you have a baby care program? They can just go to WIC. WIC does help them. Uh, the Women, Infant, and Children program, it's a... USDA type program uh, for those of you who aren't aware, but they can get formula, they cannot get diapers. So if we have parents who are in the WIC program but come to us and say, hey, we need help with diapers, we will give them double the normal, normal amount of diapers since we're not giving them formula, as well as for breastfeeding mothers. So 
That's the baby care program. Um, and then I talked a little bit about our clothing bank. And then we have our two annual programs, which are Backpacks and More and Toys and More. And I'll talk a little bit more about those when we get to the statistics page. So I think we'll go on from there. Uh, let's see. So uh, these are some statistics, and I went ahead, um, because you're never going to remember everything I'm saying because you're drinking from a fire hose, I went ahead and brought our brochures. So we have all those programs that I went through are listed in this, and I have some in the back. Um, but then I also wanted to share some stats with you, and I'll leave one of these pages. I don't have a, a bunch of them, but I'll leave one with Edna, and that way if you guys want copies of the numbers, maybe there's some accountants in the room that like numbers, uh, I wanted to provide these to you. So some statistics of those programs that I shared with you last year in 2023, we served about 41,501 people with emergency food assistance. That mobile pantry that I was talking to you about that is like zero dark 30 in the morning, the reason I'm so hesitant to change that is because we're serving 13,261 families last year in that program. We served 2,179 showers last year. Um, we had 12,122 volunteer hours that were given to the Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank. We gave out 230 32 baby care bags, 10, over 10, 000, almost 11,000 of our daily lunch sacks. Um, and then something I'll draw your attention to is um, Edna mentioned that you guys used to participate and partner with us for our Thanksgiving and our Christmas events. Um, so those events got bigger than we did. That was really the issue. Uh, so we, we are still continuing to partner together. Um, but this past year, we served a record number of both of those programs. So for Thanksgiving, we gave out 460. 61 Thanksgiving food boxes, and at Christmas we served almost 1,100 Christmas food boxes, which meant 2,100 uh, children that got Christmas toys. It was so big in the past, when I started nine years ago, we were distributing both of those programs out of the food bank. and. Um, Professor Kirk knows that was challenging. It had some major challenges trying to serve a lot of people out of our very tiny space and very tiny parking lot. So a few years ago, we moved it to the school. We got some additional partnerships and moved it to the school. Then COVID hit, we moved it to the parking lot at Palm Valley Church in a drive-through format. Last year, it was so big that we had to split our signups into three different churches. We did three different distributions. This year, it was so big we had to distribute out of five different church locations. So we're so blessed to have so many incredible partners that want to come alongside us and help us to reach more and more people each year in the community. Unfortunately, that number and that need does continue to grow. Um, so a couple of things. For those of you who have been down to the food bank, maybe used to come down and help with those Thanksgiving and Christmas distributions, the building might look a little bit different. We have been working so hard to improve um, our facilities that had kind of not been very well maintained over the years. Um, as you can imagine, 27 years in an old building is a long time. So we did a remodel and expansion of our lobby. So those kind of orange chairs that you see there, that would have been the outside if you had come prior to summer of 2021, we created that nice seating area that allows people, our clients, to be able to come in and sit down and fill out their forms in the air conditioning instead of having to be standing room only. Um, we updated all of our restrooms during that whole process. Uh, our lobby um, got a new facelift. But then I looked around and went, okay, well, now the inside's looking better. Let's do something about the outside. So we've actually re, uh, we had the whole external of the building repainted, resurfaced our parking lot in the last couple of years, and that's all because of the financial support that we get from grant writing and from people like you. We get no government funding at all. All the dollars are specifically coming from our community and grants or donations, so we're so grateful and blessed to have so much support to be able to do these great things. So some ways that you can get involved, uh, many of you already do these, so this is, you know, in essence, preaching to the choir. Um, 
But I went ahead and highlighted the things that I know this past like week or two we're actually completely out of. So um, I know macaroni and cheese we've been out of, uh, dry pasta, and then sometimes people think to donate food, but they don't think to donate hygiene. But we've been completely out of shampoo and liquid laundry, uh, liquid dish soap has been a really popular request, and we don't have any of that right now. So if you're looking for some in-kind things to donate, there's some ideas there for you, and I can of course share those with the missions committee and get those to you as well. Next one. So something that maybe you knew, think about or you don't think about, but with our daily lunch sacks, we actually put those into a plastic grocery bag. So if you're like me, you have like a pantry or an under your kitchen sink that's overflowing with bags and you don't know what to do with them and you don't want to waste them, we will take them. We will happily accept those. Uh, so I know a few members of your missions committee come and bring donations so you guys can collaborate to have one person bring those down for us or as you're packing Packing up to, to head out of town for the rest of the hot, um, you can give, give those bags uh, to us and we'll put them to good use while you're gone enjoying your lovely summers. Mm -hmm. um, okay, next one. Uh, some other ways that you can get involved, uh, just giving, which you guys do so generously, and we're so grateful for and so blessed um, by all of you. Um, and then another way is volunteering, which I mentioned, and then joining the board. So those are some ways that you can kind of give of your, your time, your talents, and your treasures. Um, and then just a reminder, uh, we are an AZ Charitable Tax Credit Organization, so um, if you haven't filed your taxes, you're almost late. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow is the deadline, but you can still give if you've done your taxes and you knew like, oh no, I'm gonna have to owe to state. You can get money back dollar for dollar up to, I think it's 421 right now, or 8, 841 and 421 um, individual or joint. And then that number is actually increased. It was the same for many years and that it increased last year to this amount. And then it's increasing pretty significantly for next year. So if you're already going to be starting to think about your charitable giving for next year, you can consider the Agua Fria Food and Clothing Bank because you will get that money back dollar for dollar in your Arizona state tax refund. If you file in Arizona, the rest of you, sorry, you get to enjoy a nice summer instead. That's it. So thank you again for the opportunity to come and to share with you today. Again, it's always such a blessing to be able to be here with you. And we're so, so thankful, um, not just for those of you who give of your time and, and your funds, but for those of you who pray for us. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I was very blessed by the worship this morning. It's a tough job. Uh, and nine years is a long time. And so sometimes we get drained and our, our batteries need recharged. And my opportunity to come here and be with you each year is a way that I get to recharge my battery. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I, I hope you've enjoyed hearing and seeing some of the opportunities available for Leanne. Your mission committee has a, a donation that we want to give $1,000 to you to use where it's most needed. And we they're one of our um, missions that we support regularly every month. So <clears throat> they continue to get money from us and special funds. And of course, when Thanksgiving and Christmas comes and school bags come and things like that, the mission committee also supports it. So we'd like to pray for Leanne right now. If you'll join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for <clears throat> Leanne and all of the volunteers that help to put on a program such as Aqua Free of Food and Clothing Bank. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to help in our small way. May you bless all of the work they're done and the people. May they come to know you by knowing that people love you and love them by donating to this cause. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? All right, good morning. good morning. Welcome to Moments for Missions, part two. <laughs> uh, we're pleased to have Kathy Berbardo 
uh, missionary of George Brazil here today, and I've always wanted to ask her, why did they spell Brazil B-R-A-S-I-L? So she has the answer for me for that. Uh, Kathy's the daughter of Hal and Judy Merwald, and Hal is here today. Uh, Hal and Judy were active in the church for many years. Judy served in the deacons, and um, Hal served as um, uh, elder for many years. And last year, Hal served as our interim pastor until Pastor Nate began his service. So we thank you for that great service as well. As many of you know, Judy passed away on Monday, April 1st, and there'll be more information about uh, service and so forth coming uh, soon. Uh, Kathy and her husband, Edgy, have been missionaries in Sao Paulo, Brazil for 20 years. They have one daughter and they have two grandsons, one year old and a three year old. Kathy began her love for Brazil as a child when her parents, Hal and Judy, served as missionaries there from 1967 to 1976. That's a pretty long time. Uh, Pebble Creek Community Church has helped support mission of Joy Brazil for over 12, 12 years. Their mission is to reach teens for Jesus Christ in Brazil and to, dis to disciple them so they can be leaders for Christ. Recently, an opportunity to purchase an existing uh, youth camp became available. Our church donated almost $24,000 towards the purchase. And then Kathy told us our gift would be matched by an unnamed donor making the total $48,000. Kathy will now share a little bit more about Joy Brazil and the youth camp. And uh, Kathy, we look forward to it. Thank you. Good morning, church. Our family, we would like to thank you for your kindness, for your love that you've extended to us at this time. And my dad and I drove up here today and we just said, oh, mom just loved Love this church, and um, so we feel your love. Thank you for that, and um, this was such a great place for, for mom. And um, mm -hmm. on the 28th, we will be having the memorial service here after the, the service, so. Um, as Steve said, we've been in Brazil for 20 years, and the reason it's called Joy Brazil with an S is because Brazil in, in Brazil is spelled with an S. So um, that's why it says Joy Brazil um, with an S. Um, our target is teenagers 13 to 17. And how many of you guys have those in your life? Yeah, OK. So um, this is a wide open door for the gospel. Kids are looking for something. And we work with the kids who would never come to a church. They would never. Um, Put their foot inside a church but if you said hey we're going to have a soccer game we're going to have a barbecue um, we can get into the school sometimes if we uh, volunteer to teach or coach a sport so the idea is to go to them because they will not come to us and um, so we we reach out to these kids through our leaders we have 30 volunteer leaders who give about 10 hours a week of their time um, to do this and one of our great tools is our camps and um, this was our camp right after COVID, and it, it's just the point where we get to give the kids the whole plan of salvation. Because no matter what we're doing with them, whether it's a day camp or a soccer tournament, we always stop and talk about the person of Jesus Christ. But at a camp, we get them for five days so we can give them the whole plan of salvation, that they're separate from God, that there is a way to God through Christ's finished work on the cross. And um, so after the person gives their life to Christ, we then disciple and train. So basically what Joy does with this target age group is evangelize, disciple, and train. And, train. and once the person is being discipled, then they will be trained to evangelize, disciple, and train. So I want to tell you about these guys. Um, the second guy there, Mateos, he was known as the worst kid in school. And um, he went to camp and he met Jesus Christ. And he was discipled. And then these guys are from his neighborhood. It's a, a poor neighborhood near our city. And he invited them to camp. And, and through the speaker and through Mateos' testimony, 
um, this big guy in the back, Micaeus, he got together with the group after the crosstalk and he said, guys, this is the answer. We can't go on living the way we are. And all seven of them gave their lives to Jesus Christ. They've been in the discipleship and now they're being trained to then reach out to those in their um, city and in their area. And yesterday, while I was here, um, they had a day camp and I was just praying the whole day because I couldn't be there. And these guys brought 30 kids to day camp to hear about Jesus yesterday. So it's exciting to see the evangelism training, the discipling, the training, then it keeps repeating um, the cycle. Okay. Um, the next one is, uh, what is next one? oh yeah, it's hard to see here. <laughs> Um, the discipleship can happen anywhere in the city. We have about 25 groups of kids um, and leaders meeting. It could happen in a mall. could happen in a home. It could happen also on the street, which... Um, oops, next one. Yeah. Which is... Um, this is Edgy's group from last year's camp, and they like to meet on the sidewalk in front of the uh, Pastelaria da Familia, which is where they eat fried meat pastries in the heat. Mm, yeah. So they study the word on the street, and that's all the process of discipling and teaching them, because Jesus said, make disciples and teach them. And so that's the important thing is to, to, te to teach them. Okay, next. Um, in this picture, I, I wanted to share this with you, because Raquel, as the girl on the left, she met Christ at a very dark time in her life at 16, and again, was discipled and trained, and this is the girl that she has discipled, who is now being trained, and we hope to have Jijika on student staff with us, and it's a process that just keeps going. So Jijika's 16, and she said, hey, guess what? I started a, a club at my school where people can come, and we can tell them about Christ. It's a public school. There are no adults in there. It's just Jijika doing that, so that has just been wonderful. And after that, we have, um, oh, this is a special one. This is Tarsus' group, and there are three girls in her group. She's been walking with them for almost two years now. Uh, three of them are being trained for, to have their own groups um, when they get to college. So that's been a special thing. They meet every week, too. Next one. Okay. okay, I had to share this with you guys. But before Easter this year, we had at my house brought all the groups together and told them about the story of the Passover, which they didn't know. You know, Easter, when you have not had any church, it's an Easter bunny and chocolate. And so to tell them about the blood of the lamb that covers us, that was on the doors in Egypt, and that they had to eat quickly and leave. So of course, the joy leaders are like, oh, we should have we should definitely have lamb. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. So like get some little strips and we'll get some unleavened bread and the kids can like taste it during the talk. Well, in Brazil, when you do barbecues, you either, you know, you go big or you go home. So we have like lamb chops for uh, the Passover. And um, it was so special to hear the kids say, I never knew and that idea of the blood of the lamb that covered them in, in the doors in Egypt, symbolic of the blood of the lamb. Christ on the cross. So that was really special. Um, this is our leadership camp in February. We have, most of our leaders have come up from joy. They serve in joy. They give 10 hours a week. Some of them have little babies. So it's been a, a juggling act to see these young kids grow up and then want to serve. And just as Leanne said, we're always looking for volunteers. So the big prayer for us this week, if you care to join us and put your alarms at 9.38, in Matthew 9.38, the Lord Jesus says, the harvests are white, but there are few workers. Ask the Lord of the harvest to bring workers into his field, and the harvests are white. Yesterday, there were so many kids that came out of nowhere, and the Lord Jesus is bringing them, and um, we need workers to disciple them, because all the disciples have their hands full right now, so we need more people, so that's a big prayer for us, and um, another big thing Steve touched on was the, the camp. We never expected to really have a camp, because we would never imagine to have money to buy one, but a donation of a Brazilian brother in Brazil sparked this camp acquisition project, and um, so we have a camp in mind. I want to show you a little video of it, only one minute. But the beautiful thing about this camp. Our hearts beat to the city streets. We 
We began to feel the fire We rise like tall buildings As the chemicals they take us higher The night's young And it's just begun As she puts her hand in mine We want to chase the night Before I tell you why that's such a great camp, let me tell you why we need a camp. Um, we rent camps whenever we need them for discipleship, evangelism, and training. And we always have a difficult time finding anybody who will give us those, the dates because they usually belong to a church or to some organization. They get to pick their dates. But also, we've had difficulties. Um, one time, we were in a bad location, so we hired an armed guard to watch over us. Another time we put pool noodles under the doors to keep out spiders and snakes and frogs. Another time we were in a dining room with no windows. It was 40 degrees, so we wore our blankets to dinner. So there's just a lot of things that for our camp, for our purposes, we build our own mud run when we go and then we apologize and cover it up, you know, and say thank you afterwards. And um, so we, we said, Lord, we we would really use a camp if you gave it to us. And this camp, it comes with 220 beds. Everything on the property stays. All the kitchen, the dining room, all the dorms, everything is set up for 200. The, there's guest houses and apartments in there. Everything is brand new. Like, it's interesting. So it's on the market for a million dollars. We're halfway there with pledges and donations, and we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what you have done, that you come alongside us and been a part of this vision and a part of this dream. So, as we say in Brazil, muito obrigada. Thank you very much. And if you need some more information about Joy, it's on the back table. If you'd like to donate to the camp, there's a QR code. And if you know anybody that you'd like us to speak to um, about this vision and coming alongside us with that, We'd love to share that. So thank you again. Thank you for everything you've been in our lives. Thanks for loving my family. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, let's pray for uh, Joy Brazil. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for your love for us. Please comfort and strengthen the Merwald family of our beloved Judy. Grant them peace and solace in their time of grief. Help them find strength in their memories and comfort in knowing that Judy is now in your loving embrace. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of missionaries who have dedicated their lives to spreading your love and message to the ends of the earth. We are grateful for the, mission, for the ministry of Joy Brazil. Thank you for the service of Kathy and Edgy in reaching the youth in Brazil. The mission shares the good news of Jesus Christ. We lift Kathy and Edgy up to you, Lord, and ask for your design, uh, divine protection, guidance, and provision as they face various challenges. Father, we ask for your wisdom and guidance for these missionaries. Grant them discernment and understanding as they seek to effectively communicate your message of salvation at student events and open doors for them to share your love and truth with those who have never heard it before. Lastly, we pray for the financial needs. Provide them abundantly, Lord, so that they may focus on their mission without worrying about their material needs. We are so thankful for the generosity of our congregation, enabling them to continue their work unhindered. We thank you, Lord for all the missionaries who have answered your call and are serving faithfully. May they be the shining light in the darkness, bringing hope, healing, and salvation to those who are lost. 
May their efforts bear much fruit and bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. Wasn't that wonderful to hear all that you have been helping with? And just, it's amazing what this congregation gives to others. And our song of response today is, Bind Us Together, Lord, Bind Us Together. And that's what they're helping to do all the way down in Brazil. Most of us wouldn't be able to go there, but we can send the help and send the, the money and all of the things that we send and the food here with Aqua Fria. So thank you all so very much. So choir, let's stand for those of you. Let's all stand, please, and we'll sing this song together and then the doxology. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above His heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. And now for our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much. You continue to show us how to live our faith and share the bountiful gifts you have showered upon us. With the generosity of our congregation, we lovingly support our local, national, and international partners, thus helping them to spread the word of God beyond the gates of Pebble Creek to many around the world. Look at all the gifts on display this day. Our education team devising new programs that help our congregation learn more and grow stronger in the word. Our choir singing with heavenly voices praising your holy name. Our missions team along with our community and international partners reporting on the amazing and creative ways they are making Christ known to those in their com communities by addressing the basic needs of those communities, needs most of us take for granted. Help us to leave this service energized and excited to share the light of Christ with all who cross our path this week, not just in word, but by deed, dear Lord. And we will rejoice in giving you all the praise, honor, and glory you so richly deserve. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>